The Guardian's in Edwink, New York, and I'm speaking to Mark Thompson, the chief executive of the New York Times Company. So Mark, you're just saying in a session that I think the mix of subs to advertising is 50-30, is that about right? No, it, what, what happened in 2012 was that the total amount of consumer revenue, which is mainly subscription, print subscription and digital subscription, overtook advertising for the first time and is more than half the, the, com the, the company's revenue. But print advertising, which once was 80% and I think in some years more than 80% of the company's revenue, that, that's now, we're much, much less dependent on print advertising. We think print advertising actually has got a great future, but what it won't have is it won't have the economics it did in the 80s and 90s. But does it have a great future? What I mean is, uh, you'll hear the mail talking a lot about mail online and are we almost at a tipping point. Is it a point that you will come back to growth in print, but it'll only be because it gets so small and insignificant that we, we don't really care? Well, I think, I think it's going to be smaller than it was. I don't think it needs to be insignificant. And I think, although you can't be certain about it, I think you can make the case that the physical newspaper, the New York Times physical New York Times, could outlive the traditional web. And the, as, as, that as, well, well, the, the, the tra traditional, the, the, the web that we've all grown up with um, of, um, you know, a desktop environment, a homepage, mytimes.com, um, mo mobile, uh, or mobile as I'm known to call it, um, is, is becoming and will become, I think, so pervasive and the, the kind of appification of the world so pervasive, absolutely traditional, typing into the World Wide Web and going on to traditional websites may, may itself feel obsolescent, obsolete. And it's possible to imagine a, a, a scenario where, because the physical newspaper is such an efficient way of, 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 of reading at certain times of the day, first thing in the morning, at night, weekend and so forth, and because it still works for some kinds of advertisers very well, particularly in the kind of brand building, luxury, uh, uh, financial services, and indeed, interestingly enough, tech space, that actually the paper may have uh, a significantly longer life than what we now think of as the web. Do you mean in terms of um, curation, that sort of thing? I mean, I personally, I find Google comes, becomes more and more difficult to use as the, year, the years go on. Maybe people are gaming it more. Do you mean there's more curation on sort of mobile platforms and in print? Yeah, and and, so and I, think, I think mobile will be, uh, is, is already, for many people, significantly, you know, a very significant way in which they, they find news. I mean, I was saying in, when, when big news happens, uh, we can get more than half of our uh, usage from mobile devices. And the Boston bombings you were talking about. That, 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 that's a recent example. And I think that, that that will grow, and I think an awful lot of the future of news providers like the New York Times and The Guardian will depend on how well we execute specifically on smartphones. Tablets are nearer to our comfort zone. Tab the, the form factor and the, the look of um, our products on tablets um, suits us. I think the smartphone is a more challenging environment. We, we have to solve uh, the issues around how, how you deploy effectively, how you tell engaging and quite long stories on smartphones and how you integrate um, marketing messages, advertising on, on smartphones as well. Now on the digital question, I think the subs numbers are up over 700,000 now. Yeah. Um, you've been in place 10 months. Um, is there some sort of magic number? Or is it just oh, as big as we can get? I mean, for example, with your transformation plan, if you speak to someone like Adam Crozier, he's given himself five years. Do you, do you have a number of years target numbers scenario? In my view, um, the Times should be aiming to significantly expand the, its direct paying relationship with consumers. And in some ways, it's the, it's the numbers of relationships and the quality of the relationships more than the particular platform. But clearly, uh, growth in subscriptions is more likely to come on the digital side over time than on, on the print side. And I'd like to expand it significantly. Yes, I would. And that, that means both, as it were, trying to encourage more people who are on the edge of subscription or already extensive users of our digital products to, to, to actually become subscribers, but it also is about developing and launching new products and services to address new audiences. Um, we've got, you know, we've got um, the last audited numbers of about 1.9 million uh, 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 paying relationships. Um, when we integrate the uh, International Health Tribune, um, that will tip over into the low, low, low two millions range. Um, but we'd like it to be significantly larger. Not because we don't believe in advertising, but we, we believe that it, it, it is, um, it's a more secure business model to have two strong revenue streams. And 
we also, we are less convinced than some, less convinced, for example, than The Guardian about pricing power in, in, in advertising, not least because all, all publishers are very small players in the digital advertising. And, and, and the pricing dynamics dominated by the big players like Google and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were talking um, about subscriptions. Obviously, look at the Radio Times. It's a subscription kind of building its subscriptions. It's all where the strength is and people stay loyal. Um, now, I was interested in, um, just quickly on advertising, because I want to ask you a couple of other questions. But there's been 11 quarters, I think, of, of, of advertising decline. Is it, are you, how close are you to, to, to popping a, a positive number and having everyone high five? I'm not going to obviously give any, any forward-looking statements, but, but uh, we we've, we've saw so far over the course of, 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 of 2013 in quarter one and quarter two uh, a significant improvement from, from, from um, quarter one to quarter two in our overall advertising revenue. Um, we've also seen um, um, uh, so far in the year the strength of uh, the growth in consumer revenue significantly offsetting the, 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 the loss in advertising revenue. And let's see where we end, go to the end of the year. But one of our challenges is to make sure that the total revenue to the company gets into a path of going up rather than going down. Um, yeah. one, of, one of my tasks is to make sure that our revenue grows. Profitability is important. We are a very profitable company. But actually revenue, revenue is it growing or is it declining, is a key health indicator. Um, uh, we've just appointed uh, Meredith Levian from, from Forbes who's come in to, to run our, our advertising and both Meredith and I believe that there's a lot we can do to strengthen our offering and absolutely consistent with the, the values of the times and the strict separation between editorial content and advertising messages, we think there's a lot we can do to offer marketers great solutions for their, for their issues. I mean, we, we want to be out there selling our wares and in advertising innovating. Um, it's not, not just, I mean, we, think we can innovate in print, but particularly innovating in what we offer people who want to advertise on our digital platforms. Um, you know, I, 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 I rather agree with um, one of the remarks made up on the platform, which is that there's been surprisingly little innovation in digital advertising over the last 10, 15, 20 years, and now is the time to start, in a sense, beginning to see the world from the advertisers, the marketers' point of view, as well as from our own point of view, and to come up with some new solutions. Just quickly on our subscriptions, you launched a range of cheaper digital subscription packages. You were saying in we we have a, we have a, a we we the, we have the initial currently the initial portfolio at the moment, but um, we're, we're developing well, you haven't uh, new them. ones. We haven't launched them yet. Uh, um, is that not uh, and that to was what not... you were saying about uh, New York Times in the session? You were saying has has been a great believer for, for decades of. of um, keeping the price high and not just running down the advertising route. Um, but here you are sort of looking at a cheaper end package. Is that well, slightly but cheap, counter that? Cheaper, cheaper does not mean cheap. I, and I believe that, that um, we should continue to be offering products which reflect the value, the, the value that people associate with the New York Times and its brand. We think that, that a broader portfolio of products will enable us to, if you like, exploit more of the, of the demand curve. There are plenty of people who prefer to pay potentially quite a lot of money um, uh, to get the New York Times in a way which, which is, suits them, but maybe less money than we currently, in the, our current lowest cost digital subscriptions are about $200 a year, and we think there's, there's room for some very valuable, high quality products but which, which come in at price points below that. So a quick question on, on brand and, and uh, image. One thing Alan said a couple of times, uh, and I don't think he's been gloating, but it will sound like it when I say so. Uh, he sort of said, well, America kind of missed that you know, it snowed in, and there was a decision made by Snowden to go to someone like The Guardian. And, and then there was a bit of an anxiousness about The Guardian working with The New York Times. From, but what, what does this tell us? I mean, is, is that a, a concern well, no, for you over, the, the, the over brand and investigative heritage and for, for The New York Times? No, I mean, if you look at the, um, the Pulitzer Prizes, you'll, you'll notice that The Times cleaned up in investigative journalism uh, in this year's Pulitzers, uh, the David Barboza story about uh, uh, the, the family of Premier Wen, the amazing uh, eye economy story about, uh, uh, about Apple, Walmart in Mexico. Um, I think under Jill Abramson, actually, the Times is doing a fantastic job in, in, in what, in this country, we call enterprise journalism, investigative journalism. Um, the Guardian and the Washington Post got, got a great story with, 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 with Edward Snowden. We've obviously not, more recently been involved in that story. But um, the fact that The Guardian gets one great investigative story, um, I, th I don't think it's, it, 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 in the greatest possible respect, is going to change 
um, the view um, um, that people in this country and, and, and around the world do about the New York Times, uh, which is that the Times is, um, in some respects, you know, that rather rare thing, a kind of definitive place for many, many kinds of journalism. And, you know, I, I would note that um, um, just last week, when Vladimir Putin decided he had something to say to the world, he didn't choose The Guardian, he didn't choose any other publication, he chose The New York Times. So Angelina Jolie, a very different, a rather wonderful piece written by Angel Angel Angelina Jolie about her own health. Again, The New York Times, if you want to say something to the world, you don't, you, the newspaper you choose, inc increasingly fascinating, increasingly is The New York Times.